Okay, so we're in the chapter on diagonalization, and we're now doing more facts about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so there's that. Um, yeah. Okay, so for certain types of matrices, it is very easy to find the eigenvalues. For example, find the eigenvalues of this matrix, which is upper triangular. Okay, so the shape of this matrix, upper triangular, leads itself to a very simple calculation. We simply expand along the first column to evaluate the determinant. So you can put all the minus lambdas on the diagonal, of course, and now you expand along the first column, you get 5 minus lambda times the determinant of what remains, and then 0 times the, zero times the, so you just have this term. Then you expand along the first column again, a minus lambda, and the rest of the time minus lambda. Okay, so the eigen... Values are 5, 8, and 10. Look, 5, 8, and 10. Okay, if so, this is saying if A is upper triangular, lower triangular, or diagonal matrix, and the eigenvalues of A are just the entries on the diagonal, because you find them by expanding along the first column or the first row. Okay, if, as the first row in the case of lower triangular, I think you have to use. Oh, no, you have to use the last. Yes, the first row. Okay. Now, the eigenvalues of an arbitrary matrix, i.e. not just upper, lower, triangular, and diagonal matrix, also satisfy the following two, equality, following two equations. So, let A be an n by n matrix with eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda n, possibly repeated, and also possibly complex, remember? So when they say possibly repeated, they mean that lambda 1 might equal lambda 3, right? Uh, okay? Anyway, then, the sum of the eigenvalues is equal to the trace of the matrix. What's the trace of a matrix? The trace is when you add up the diagonal. Okay. So, of course, that's the case for this upper triangular, right? 5 plus 8 plus 10 is equal, obviously equal to 5 plus 8 plus 10. But it's just true, even when the eigenvalues don't match the diagonal, they still add up to the same thing as the diagonal. Okay? For every matrix. Okay? It's interesting to, th it's interesting to note, oh, well, then what happens about complex eigenvalues? Because then you have a real matrix, right? So the sum on its diagonal is obviously a real number, but if you have complex eigenvalues, how do they add up to... Um, how do they add up to a real number? Well, the, the complex eigenvalu eigenvalues of roots of a polynomial, roots of a polynomial always come, if they are complex, come in, com com come in conjugate pairs, so they add up, the conjugate parts cancel out. If the imaginary parts of the conjugates cancel out, and you still you do get a real sum. Okay. Anyway, the important thing is the sum of the eigenvalues is always equal to the trace of a matrix. Okay? And then also, the product of, the product of eigenvalues is always equal to the determinant of the matrix. Okay, now, this, again, this, that is the case in here as well, right? Um, the determinant of the of upper triangular matrix is just the product of the diagonals, product of the diagonal, right? And because these are, the diagonal is also, in this case, upper triangular matrix is also the, is also the, um, the, determ the determinant, because that's exactly the determinant of a upper triangular matrix. So, of course, the eigenvalues and the determinant, eigen, the, the multiply, multiplying the eigenvalues by each other is the same as that of the determinant. But even if it's not the case, right, even if the eigenvalues are not the same as on the diagonal, they're just, then still, when you times them all together, you get the determinant, okay? Even if the determinant is not calculated from the diagonal. Again, what happens when we have a real matrix with complex eigenvalues? Well, again, the eigenvalues come in conjugate pairs, if they're complex, and so you have, you know, whenever you have complex number z times its conjugate pair, that's always equal, that's equal to the magnitude of z squared, which is a real number. So again, the, the complex parts cancel out nicely. Okay. Um, now the explanation for this is a tutorial problem. Okay, so I guess I'll leave that for you to encounter in your tutorial. Okay, rather than, yes. Um, so the, the explanation, the, the proof of this is going to be a tutorial problem. Okay. And now, should I carry on? Oh, here's an example. So here's an example. Consider the example of these theorems. So have this, consider this matrix 1, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, 3, 2, 0, 2, 3. It's a matrix you already did, did earlier. Its eigenvalues are 5, 1, and 1. So the 1 is repeated. So the trace is the sum of its diagonal elements, i.e. 1 plus 3 plus 3, which is 7. The sum of the eigenvalues is 5 plus 1 plus 1, 7. Yes, checks out. The determinant of the matrix is 5. Okay. It says check it yourself, so we better calculate the determinant. So we want the determinant of 1, 1, 1, 
zero three two zero two three. So let's expand along the first row, and you have that this thing is just the determinant of three two two three. Okay, but that's just nine minus four, which is five. Okay, so indeed the term is five, and the product of the eigenvalues, the product of now not the product of the diagonal, right? That would be for if this was upper, if this was a triangular matrix, a diagonal upper triangular or lower triangular. No, now we, we look. We have the determinant of five, and the product of eigenvalues is also five. One times one times five. The product of the diagonal is not five, but that's that's not what we're thinking about. We're thinking about this theorem says the determinant of the matrix is equal to the product of the eigenvalues. Okay. Um, we have another example here. If the matrix A has a trace of 5 and a determinant of 6, find its eigenvalues. Okay. I think, actually, you need to know that this is a 2 by 2 matrix to actually proceed with this question. So, if the matrix... If the 2 by 2 matrix A has a trace of 5 and a determinant of 6, okay, that means... The trace is 5, so that means the sum of eigenvalues is 5. And the term is 6, so that means the multi multiply the eigenvalues together, you get 6. Okay. Solve these two equations simultaneously. I'm not going to bother doing that. And apparently you get 2 and 3. Okay, so the eigenvalues are 2 and 3, even though we don't know what the matrix is. Indeed, the matrix, there are many different matrices that have these two eigenvalues and are 2 by 2. So we can't tell what the matrix is, but we can tell that its eigenvalues must be two and three. Um, I don't think we can't tell what its eigenvectors are though, because that does depend on the actual matrix. Um, how much more is there to do in this section? Can I finish this? No, it's like it's like a nice like a meaty proof. So I'm going to leave this to the next video. Okay.